Uh, what's interesting is that while we were in Peru and after we got back, Peru keeps showing up in the headlines for a bunch of different reasons. They just found that uh, three-fingered uh, mummy that's exploding all over the Internet. Nobody knows what that is yet exactly. Um, I think we're, we're a little guarded about it because um, it could be a hoax. That, that sort of thing happens a lot, especially in South America, especially after people realize how much money can be involved in purchasing, in the purchasing of, of, of these these artifacts, these bodies and skeletons, that, that might be a complete hoax. So we're guarded about that, the, that uh, particular situation. But Peru is certainly centerfold right now. And uh, there's a reason for that. They call Peru the navel of the world. In fact, the Inca called Peru the navel of the world. And the reason why they called it that was because they believed that there was a distinct, powerful connection between the heavens and the earth, uh, what they call an axis mundi, uh, at Peru, specifically in Cusco and more specifically at Sacsayhuaman. In fact, when we were on our trip uh, in Cusco, Anselm was uh, divulging some of, his, some of the information that he had gathered through his research. Now, Anselm P. Rambla is a Spanish explorer, renowned Spanish explorer. He is, we, Steve and I always joke about it because he looks like the Dos Equis guy, the most interesting man in the world, but, <laughs> but Sheila, if you get to know this guy, he really is the most interesting man in the world. I mean, he really is. They were going to make a movie about him and all kinds of uh, very interesting uh, stories uh, associated with Anselm P. Ramla, but Anselm did excavations in, in the Sakai Woman area, and that's not common. It's very difficult to get permission to do excavations anywhere in Cusco, especially at Sakai Woman. But uh, nevertheless, he was able to get the permission. He did excavations there. He also did excavations in the uh, Coricancha, beneath the church of Santo Domingo in Cusco, unprecedented excavations. And in both cases, he uncovered astounding things. And at, at Sakai Woman, Anselm did, did, uh, did his investigations and came up with the theory that Sacsayhuaman is, in fact, it's not a fortress like uh, the historians will uh, say or the archaeologists say, and it's definitely pre-Inca. There's no question about that. But what Anselm believes that Sacsayhuaman really is, is a stargate, an ancient stargate, in fact, the most powerful and important stargate on the planet. And uh, Steve and I are inclined to believe with that to believe uh, that um, Sacsay Woman is indeed a stargate. His, he, he showed us uh, the the amazing alignments of Sacsay Woman uh, with all these other locations in Peru. Absolutely mind blowing information uh, that he he talked about during his uh, seminar out there in Cusco. So the idea that Sacsay Woman is a stargate has never been put forth before. Uh, at least I've never heard. I've never heard anyone postulate that it's a stargate. I've heard all kinds of other things about it. But uh, what, what, what people have to understand about Cusco, the city of Cusco, and, and, and the primary reason why we wanted to go there, and I believe the primary reason why it's called the navel of the world, is because beneath the city of Cusco, specifically beneath Sacsay Woman, is a vast subterranean world. And there's all kinds of, of tunnels that connect. There's a labyrinth of tunnels right beneath Sacsay Woman. Not many people know that, but it's, it's, it's actually a matter of history. It's a matter of ancient history. The conquistadors and the chroniclers uh, actually wrote, write about the labyrinth that, that exists beneath Sacsay Woman. They spoke about it in their chronicles and, and in their various writings. This isn't just a localized labyrinth beneath Cusco. This is the convergence of what's called the Shinkana. And it runs all throughout the Andes Mountains. In fact, it goes all the way into the Amazon jungle. And beneath uh, Sacsay Woman is where this labyrinth, these tunnels, converge. Some of these labyrinths uh, and caverns are naturally occurring. Uh, they're magma chambers and so forth. Others are artificially devised. In other words, they're, they were built by somebody a long time ago. And in some cases, the walls of these, of these tunnels are lined with megalithic stones. So um, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. The city of Cusco, I believe it is what's called an axis mundo. It's a, it's a connection point. Uh, it's a stargate there at Sacsay Woman, and it is uh, one of the most critical places on the planet, and that is becoming more and more evident as time goes by. I think I'd like to add, too, something very important, Sheila. The idea of the world's largest stargate, we talk about the bottomless pit. We talk, Jesus talked about the gates of hell. We see all the references in the Word of God, but when we were there, it became obvious that with the celestial alignments, everything that is of importance, whether it's a pyramid, whether it's a tunnel system, whether it's a structure system, whatever, 
is always pretty much lined up with the stars, either the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, Orion, the, the Mighty Hunter, and it all goes back to Nimrod, which all goes back to the Giants, which all goes back to the Fall. Now, here's what's critical, and I think this is something we want everyone to understand. There is, an, and Tim, I'm not going to go into, you know, what's under there. I'm just going to refer to something. By having the conference, and I believe it was God's providence, and I'm saying real providence, that Tim said we need to have a conference and take it to Peru. We didn't know everything that would unfold there. But when Tim was initially talking to Anselm, Anselm made a very important statement. And the statement is, it's time. Now, I didn't know that, and I walked in, you know, I walked in on Tim, he was doing editing on uh, Holocaust of Giants, our third DVD, which, by the way, is probably one of the most important historic films, for, you know, put on DVD that people could ever watch. You'll have to watch it to understand why this is important. We're being given, Sheila, the keys to understanding the prophetic fulfillment of history that's unfolding in the headlines. Even today, as we're doing this interview on the London Daily Mail, there's a story about a Peruvian mummy princess that they've been able to forensically rebuild, and again, it's coming from Peru. Now, here's what I'm going to tell people, and you asked me about the uh, three-fingered alien. I think people will better be aware that because of the extreme powers that be, and I'm talking the supernatural powers of hell, fallen angels are corporate minions, and I'm not kidding when I share this, that there will be mockumentaries made. Those of us who are out in the field doing documentaries and true historic research, there's going to be stuff that's going to be so smooth that it's going to basically seem like it's true. And then they're going to spring the word, well, this was just all make-believe, kind of like the famous mermaid episode on one of the channels a couple of years ago. So what's happening is God is giving his warning all over the world. I got an email from Tasmania. So I want people to understand this. The Branson actual seating capacity, I think we're 80 to 85% sold out. But we've opened it up to live streaming, which means people can stream it at the time the speakers are speaking or they can stream in at a later date. And we've got all over now people responding. So, you know, it's on my website, stevequail.com. But that wasn't the original plan. And so I think that, and I, I maybe this sounds almost corny, but I think the lid is not about to be blown off. I believe the lid is blown off. Well, we were at the Court of Conscience. One of the things that uh, Anselm P. Rombla and Tim are on record is Anselm was the only guy to be able to go beneath the convent of Santo Domingo uh, the uh, Corticancha and actually go into the tunnel system before the powers that be shut him down. While we were there, we were filming. We weren't supposed to film, and there were some heavyweight guys there. I mean, when I say heavyweight, I'm talking people with power that were basically telling us to our face. They were lying to us that Father Gamara, the man who was the head prior, this is critical, the prior of the Corticancha was not on the grounds. Well, guess what? God arranged that he was on the ground, so we had open lies to try and keep the verification of Anselm being able to reunite with Father Gamara. What's happening, Sheila, is God is giving his followers the keys, and now after we get the keys, everyone is saying they have to now put their spin on it. So all the stuff they've tried to sit on until a later date is absolutely being, their hands are being forced, saying that, we are dependent upon the sales of our DVDs to basically fund our next expedition, which number four is underway. But, you know, I, I want to make this clear to people. We have to do this stuff on a shoestring budget. And yet the most powerful, wealthy individuals, both in uh, on Earth and their, uh, you know, fallen angel control mechanisms that control the money of the world, are out there, you know, doing everything they can to confuse us. Now, greater is he who's in us than they who are in the world. And so we're putting this out there. Those of you who are older in age who have established, you know, pretty much your life and you don't have heirs or anything, and you know that God is going to raise up a team of people, I just encourage encourage you to pray to see if you if God's asking you to come along aboard with it. If it weren't for one man and his wife who basically sought God and God said, help these guys out financially, this whole thing would have never happened. So saying that, if you can't see the hand of the living God, even as a believer, that we're being placed strategically at the right place at the right time, that what's a chance of, uh, and I call, and I do this out of respect, 
but I called Tim, Jungle Tim, a guy that basically lived in the Amazon for 10 years. Now we're in Peru, you know, obviously the Amazon is uh, on the other side of the mountains, but we're meeting with the whole unfolding, Sheila, of that which has been hidden. In essence, people, we're, we're not just quoting the scripture, Daniel. What we're saying is that which has been sealed up to the end is being unsealed. And if that doesn't get people excited, I don't know what does, because again, God is in the forefront. If Satan get thee behind me, not we follow behind the devil. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely.